Okay, so to set up the volumetrics to create this sort of effect, what you need to do is create, create a light. I do have two lights in the scene, but this one is going to, but the other one's turned off. So this is purely going to be a volume light. So in the shape area, in the attribute editor, I'm going to scroll down, invisibility, I can zero all these out. Doesn't matter too much at the moment for the camera visibility, but that will come up in our renders. So you might want to remove that. The only one we need on is volume. So what we will do is create a separate pass just for the compositors to control this. Your geometry for the effect will have a, either a surface shader, which is black, or you could use the standard surface, which is the newer um, built-in Maya shader, possibly to be put in place for the Lambert. And then in the attribute editor, if you scroll down to the Arnold tab, there's a map drop down, enable matte. So this will all now just be flat black, much like the legacy surface shader. So I've just got that light and this. Then I go to the render settings. The only thing I'm going to alter is this. I've reduced all these to zero because they will have zero effect, but Maya will still have to calculate each of them. So shaved off a few seconds, which everything counts. I've kept that to eight. It's still going to be noisy because atmospherics are a pain. In the, atmo in the um, environment tab, I will add the AI atmosphere volume. There is also another option to add, I believe, another legacy um, input, but that's the one you want for this. And so here, we can change a few things. They will counteract each other. So if I bring up my render, and I'll hit render. So for this, I've got the density to 0 0.4 and the attenuation to 0 0.005. So the attenuation will essentially thin it out based on the angle of the light. So you're kind of going between both things. There are samples in here. So the render samples could be increased just for that. But now we're not sampling anything else. I can't imagine there would be too much of a difference in there. So there was nothing coming up in my render initially because I was looking through an AOV, which is RGBA denoise. And so nothing will come up until the beauty is fully generated. So to add that denoise, which I kind of missed out on here. In the AOVs tab, in recent years, they added the denoiser area. So we have optic denoiser. So this will try and smooth out the beauty. And because this is being used as a separate render layer, then we could probably get away with just using that rather than spending many hours rendering this. So I've turned on that. If you want denoising for AOVs, you would include that. The only problem is this will add overall render time because you're rendering the AOV and then you're also rendering a denoise version in a similar way to I'm using the optics denoise so I'm rendering a beauty first and then it's calculating this after so it's not necessarily re-rendering because it's shooting all the rays to create the beauty get the color information and then it's running through a denoise after that so the result of, of this at the moment would look something like like this. So looking in the top left hand corner in this black area, I can still see some sampling. You can see where the noise has been smoothed out, but 
But yeah, I don't know if we can get away with that. But this takes 44 seconds of frame, approximately. It was fairly high for a scene with nothing in it, really. And, and yeah, you can alter the... Um, so if I want to increase the thickness, but based on the reference that I had, I don't really want to do that. But if I alter the density, so if I bring it up, you can see that you get a way more intense effect because the, f the atmosphere is becoming thicker, so the light has a greater impact. So now this spill from the fan blade is becoming greater. So if I leave that at 0.8, I'll let it render for a bit, then take a snapshot. And as I said earlier, so this denoise is an after process, even though it is a separate AOV, so it's not being calculated at the same time. So that's why this will be black until the render is completely finished. So that'll do. I'll save that snapshot. I'll start to play with the attenuation. So maybe I'll put it on zero to see what that looks like. So that is just pure atmospheric added with no no restraint over it um, the anastropy I didn't play with that but based on what it does in other shaders I would not alter this because this is stretching of reflections so you could get away with using it on smaller commercials for I don't know, perfume, like metallic objects. If you specifically need a reflection line that isn't going the, um, that is not the specific direction or shape that you want, you would increase this. So based on that, I believe if I had, um, if I didn't have mats, so these objects are mats because I want to render this separately. So I'm not, the atmospheric is not contributing to the um, specular or diffuse of any of them. So if I put textures and shaders on all of this, then the atmospheric light, um, sorry, the atmospherics um, will look different, but it will also take double the time, if not more, to calculate. So as I ramp up the attenuation, let's do it much higher. So I'll go 0 0.5. You see nothing has happened. So it's pulling it back so much that it's now not appearing. So I'll go from 0, 0.0, sorry, go from nothing to 0 0.01. If we look at the before. So it's keeping the same level of thickness, but adjusting how um, extreme it will be. In terms of the actual angle coming out, that would need to be altered via the light. So I'll just bring up this attenuation a bit. So there will be a slight battle between the intensity of the light and the attenuation because you don't want to completely burn out everything. So the volume light I've got it has a fairly high exposure. It's 13, because I really wanted to accentuate these lines. And in relation to the object, the light is, uh, where's my grid? Okay, it's about two meters back in real world scale. And it's quite small. So this is a, and I've used a disc shape, so it is more of a spotlight. And just to reiterate, everything apart from volume is turned off. I did add an AOV light group just to test to see what would happen. Um, but because this is not the standard type of volume, such as fluids, um, nothing will, will turn up, unfortunately. So that's why it might as well be rendered separately with matte, ob matte shaders on these objects. So there is nothing plugged in, so you could just apply the shader to all your objects that is um, that are already rendering, and then enable the mats, or just use the shade, uh, surface shader away, 
and your render will be screened on top of um, on top of the CG in compositing. So we do have an alpha, which looks something like that. That's not it's not actually pure alpha, but the alpha is affected obviously by the density. So all this grey is actually the level of density from that volume because the volume is pretty much a black and white value. Um, of opacity spread out throughout the whole scene that is only visible based on the light that's hitting it. So if I want to alter the angle of this, so I'll hit render, try do this interactively. And so if I want the rays to go more to the right, so I'm just going to do the opposite in relation to my so my lights will go to the left so so I'll select with the light selected then I'm going to shift it to the left and as you can see it's now completely altering the angle So as I said before, if I bring up the exposure, then it's, um, the attenuation is also going to be affected. So I could, if I wasn't playing with the attenuation, I could just use this as a primary controller, but it might be a, a combination of both. So I put this exposure to 16, that's incredibly burnt out. So we're getting like pure white values. But then if I go back to my um, go back to the environment volume atmosphere volume and then if I start to bring this up so attenuation is a feature that you will find in areas of Maya such as N-cloth Maya fluids probably Bifrost as well. So let's do 2.5.1. Uh, no, that's still burnt out. So I'm just slowly adjusting this, but you can see it, it really does impact the end result. So this is with a higher exposure, but now I've pulled it back. But I would still say that this is probably burning out in the back. Because that is, I mean, this is two meters away and we've got an exposure of 16. I can't remember how the exposure units work in Maya based on real world, but I know in 3ds Max they use Kelvin. So you'd be able to work out how bright that is in real life if you were to, if that was in. Um, real world scales. So what I'll do is I'll just um, lower the exposure because I don't want this completely burnt out. So I could put that lower, I'll put it to 12 and then change back my attenuation. I'm going to lower it because the lower attenuation, so if you're creating like a simulation with NCLOF or my fluids and you've got zero attenuation, you're going to get some crazy results. It's going to be um, no no control essentially and then when you're adding attenuation it will generally smooth things out so if i just put this to zero see what happens see now we're getting a similar result as we had a few moments ago with a lower exposure let's take a look at the alpha wait there is no alpha at the moment Hmm, okay, I must have just changed something else. But anyway, that is the basic setup for the atmospheric volume. So essentially you'll just, you know, set up your render settings here. And then we have the samples here, so you can turn all these to zero. Or you could keep this to the default. If I do a test render, 
before I do the run through. So this is on eight. So I'm just going to snapshot that. So the default is, I think, three. So I'll render that. See how that looks. And then the other area of samples, because we are just rendering this on its own, we could change the samples within the atmosphere in a similar way that you can change the samples on the lights. So this took seven, um, seven seconds, or seven milliseconds, no, seven seconds to render. So a snapshot that and go to the samples here. So it looks pretty noisy. So the, the thing with this is that these, the noise and sampling will be affected by not only the lights, but the volume itself. So I believe if I don't change this AA just on its own, I would probably have to change the samples on both the volume and the light. Because we can't render a separate AOV for this because this is not the typical volume that Maya's AOVs are expecting. So if I change this to, no, let's go to 15, go crazy. So I'll render this. So keep in mind that the render time took seven seconds before. So taking a bit longer. That took just over double. And we have that result. There's the denoise of it. That's pretty good. Apart, well, apart from down there. Let's go, let's double that again, just to check what the result is. So we've gone from seven seconds to 15. Our AA overall scene samples are still three. But as I said before, the reasoning for just changing the camera AA is because it is a multiplier. So I've removed everything else and the, the only things it will be multiplying would be the volume and the light samples. So now our volume samples are 30. And the way in which this is created, as I think I mentioned, it is just essentially a gradient in the scene. So it's very, um, it's not like, um, creating actual fluid, a fluid sim in the proper traditional way. It's a lot lighter than that. Okay, that took 28 seconds, almost double again. So there's a bit more change, but the render settings are getting quite high. I mean, the render times again, quite high. So yeah, it's up to you. You could also change for a quick test. I will up the samples to, uh, let's get crazy, four in the lights. Save the snapshot. So I predict it's probably gonna be like 50 seconds. Would you recommend, so like, cause we have other lights in the scene, so like from the pods and whatnot. So would you recommend like doing this kind of stuff or like a separate render layer? Yeah, I would say, um, yeah, create a new render layer, bring in only the objects that you need because you'd have a separate light. Um, um, Oh, sorry, that was, sorry, I just looked at that render. That light, changing the light samples from one to four actually had no effect. That's interesting. That's not good. So, okay, trash that. That's rubbish. Cool. Um, I'm going to end that. Um, should, should I end the recording now? Yeah, yeah.